Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, all hired today. My next guest holds all three. He remains overweight tech. Joining me now with his year-end playbook is Rich Saperstein of Treasury Partners, ranked number four on Barron's 2024 Top 100 Financial Advisors list. Always good to get your thoughts, um, especially as we, I guess, enter into the home stretch. There we go. Of this year. Um, about to mark two years of this bull market. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy, man. Time just flies. How are you feeling about it? I think the setup is really good. We have the two largest economies stimulating or easing monetary policy. Uh, labor is strong. Economic activity is strong. Inflation is declining. And, uh, you know, the, the real issue for the stock market going forward is going to be the elevated multiple and the inflated estimates for earnings in 25. Well, so, you say inflated, so you, you're, you're insinuating that you think they're too high? Well, multiples are 21, 22 times yeah. next year's 275 estimate, which is a 15% increase over this year's estimate. That's right. So it's a lofty goal. And you doubt whether we can reach that? I'm still fully invested. So as a long-term investor, uh, I believe in the equities and uh, we're on positioned. We should show the, um, the S&P 500 because I, I just have my eye on that as we get ever closer to 5,800. Do you think we'd be at 5,800 now? I mean, just given all that this market has had to absorb over the last couple of years, I mean, forget the couple of years, even like six months. It's it, been really resilient. It, it's truly amazing, but uh, monetary policy was designed to slow the economy and bring down inflation. Yet you have fiscal policy that is stimulating through a two trillion dollar deficit. So you have an offset, and that's been able to that's enabled the stock market to continue to push forward. Interesting performance in um, the last quarter, right? We had tech take a back seat. Mm -hmm. Things like you know financials and utilities and other areas of the market. Does that change anything about how you view the rest of this year? No, we still like large cap technology. They are the, hu the established owners of human attention. So they are the dominant global players, billions of customers, and that will continue to, to be a key part of the growth story. So you continue to lean into those names? Absolutely. We could discuss them and, uh, individually, but there's factors uh, impacting all of them, which is why we like them. But I find it interesting, though, that you know, while you suggest a little bit of discomfort with the multiple, these stocks are the epicenter of the discomfort, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they so eat, how do you square that? Because I'm basically positioned with uh, the idea that these are long-term holds and they have tremendous growth elements and the market's going to rotate how much they're pricing these companies. But I'm going to hold them for the long term and I see what they're doing. These are very clever managers in all of these, com these companies. Yeah. You watch Amazon lately. I asked one of our guests already about the stock. I mean, it's traded poorly lately concerning at all? No, because they're coming out with Cooper, the, broad, the wireless broadband that's going to compete with Starlink. So you think about Starlink is running at a six and a half, seven billion dollar rate right now. They're going to compete with Starlink. Think about what it does to uh, the prime membership and the lock on that, let alone the retail business when you start marrying all that. So Amazon's got a great future going forward. Let's talk about utilities. I mentioned these other groups that did really well last quarter. You've liked utilities for a while. I've been talking about, you know, the, the power generation that's going to be needed for the revolution that you're talking about in AI. All that said, the group was up like 19% in the last quarter, right? It was yeah. the best performing of the S&P. Yeah. And you think that continues? So uh, we started buying Vista Energy in 2021. Yeah, a lot of people like that name. Well, we were in it at 16. It's 125 right now, and we recently added more to it. Um, the story is basically the power generation versus consumption is only a 2% cushion in America today. Then you have coal being decommissioned. You have the tremendous growth in AI and data centers. They've doubled mm -hmm. since 2021 to 5,400 data centers around America. And then you look at the PJM, the annual auction for surplus power, it was up 800% year over year. All that is a tapestry of great demand, secular, for power generation. I'd be very focused on the independent power producers in America like Vista Energy.